A new era begins in Starkville, Mississippi. Game number one for Jeff Lebby's Bulldogs as Mississippi State takes on the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. And we're here breaking it all down. Our full preview and predictions. He is Cole Thompson. I am Chris Phillips, folks. Welcome to SEC Unfiltered. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. This segment brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. Guys, go to MyBookie.ag. Use promo code SECU at sign up to receive a special welcome offer on your first deposit. And that's MyBookie.ag, promo code SECU, to get your special welcome offer and bet on all of the Week 1 action, including this game we're discussing all throughout the season. Guys, let's move into it. Again, Cole Thompson joins me. We're breaking down the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Eastern Kentucky Colonels as the SEC football season is officially back. Cole, my man, first things first, what's going on? How you feeling? Oh, boy. This is going to be this is going to be this <laughs> segment that makes me or breaks me. I, I generally don't know. There, there is a love-hate relationship going on right now inside my heart with not only internal thoughts, but also the, 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 the Mississippi State fans that I know are clamoring at the cowbells, begging me to come into town. It's like that scene in the movie Warriors. Warriors, come out to play. There's this ring in the cowbells. Cole, come to Starkville because they just know that I am not going to walk out of that town unscathed. It's a it's a year to where you can prove me wrong, Mississippi State. I don't think you will, but we go find out pretty quickly what this offense looks like. And ultimately, the one thing that we do know about Jeff Lubby's units, you don't want to go and shoot out fashion with them. The path to prove the doubters wrong, Cole. It begins in week one again against Eastern Kentucky. Saturday, August the 31st, 6 p.m. Eastern kick on SEC Network. Plus, this game, of course, being played in Starkville at Davis Wade Stadium. Like you mentioned, the Cowbells will be ringing for Jeff Levy's debut. Mississippi State, a 29-and-a-half point favorite in this game. The over-under set at 58-and-a-half. This is the first meeting between these two schools. Again, game one of Jeff Levy, the big headliner. But let's first talk about the Colonels, Cole, meeting the Colonels, Eastern Kentucky. And what folks may not realize, they gave an SEC team a little bit of a scare last year. The Kentucky Wildcats, this is a team that went 5-6, and 4-2, and two, by the way, overall. But they trailed Kentucky, Cole. It was 21-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Lost that game 28-17, to 17, but they made that one very uncomfortable for Mark Stoops' team there in Lexington. But Eastern Kentucky, they got to replace a ton. They got to replace their quarterback. They got to replace their running back. They got to replace their top three receivers, their top linebacker, a lot of their secondary as well. So they're one of these teams, Cole, you see it with these lower-level teams gutted by the transfer portal. And that's the case with EKU uh, and also guys just leaving. Uh, they're anchored by a veteran offensive line, a strong running game as well. They do also return their top sack getter and linebacker, Frank Lee, from a season ago. But again, a lot of unknowns when it comes to Eastern Kentucky. So, Cole, let's talk briefly about the Colonels because this is a game, as we break down all the games of week ones, a lot of non-conference matchups. Heck, they're all non-conference matchups. But a lot of these SEC team against FCS team or SEC team against lower-level team where it's our focus is more so on the SEC team. And I, I think that's the case here. The focus yeah. is going to be on Mississippi State. Do they take care of their business? Almost a 30-point favorite. but. It is kind of an in interesting wrinkle in this one that, you know, Eastern Kentucky has gone into a SEC venue and has at minimum caused some headaches. So that's the thing you got to avoid if you're the Bulldogs. Do not let this thing get into a third quarter or, God forbid, fourth quarter game because the longer you let a team like EKU hang around, the more they believe, hey, we can win this thing, which I, I don't know that I worry that'll be a problem, but it's just important, again, prove the doubters wrong, important for Jeff Levy's squad to start fast, stay hot, and, and get off to a hot start this year. What's so interesting to me when it comes to EKU is that not only do they continuously send players to high-profile schools at Division One after a few years of being developed with the Colonels, but there's always been rumors of potentially expansion in the Sun Belt, and they want to add a team in from Kentucky. And the one roster that feels like is built is battle-tested and has the persona to carry on that weight is Eastern Kentucky. So 
You're starting to see as more schools are being added to the FBS level from the FCS conference. Kansas State was just added in last year. Sam Houston State. We see Jacksonville State. We've seen James Madison come on in immediately and flourish in the Sun Belt from the Hale State of West uh, from the Hale State of Virginia. I mean, we've seen Avalanche State do the same thing over the last decade plus coming on in. So it's not uncommon to think that if the Colonels are able to start establishing themselves against SEC opponents, whether it be lower tier or not, they're going to get a call soon. And so for that standpoint, I think that every game that they play against a higher opponent. They want to be the enforcer. They want to be the standard setter. They want to show that they belong at a higher level of competition. Because we've already heard for weeks on end, whenever it comes to North Dakota State and South Dakota State, they've done great. It's time to go ahead and move them off of the FCS level, bring them into the FBS, let them play quality competition. I think Eastern Kentucky falls in that same category. In the Sun Belt, they've been talking about potential expansion. Two teams you continue to hear a lot about, EKU and Chattanooga. And wouldn't it be interesting to see a Sun Belt, Fun Belt march their way into the SEC instead of standard? They're the other S conference, but their conference means supreme. So, Cole, looking at this game again, game one of the Jeff Levy era in Starkville, I think that's the thing that really jumps out. Do, do we see the immediate fireworks? And, and like I mentioned, Mississippi State, this has been a football team that has been doubted, that has been – they've taken their shots, if you will, over the last couple months – what do you know? I don't know if there's anything we can see from week one, obviously, against Eastern Kentucky Cole that's going to all of a sudden make us say, wow, this this Mississippi State team, they're just they're way different than I think we all expected. You really can't draw conclusions from a game like this or or, or take any hard facts away. But what does a successful opener for Jeff Levy look like for you? Like, what do you most want to see from Mississippi State that would be a positive start of the Levy era and get them off on the right foot in 2024? I think that when you look at the song Power Line from Goofy Movie, you know, it's great because they see eye great to eye. Great track. Great yeah, track. They, they see eye to eye, and uh, that's what I want to see from Blake Chapin and Jeff Levy. Because if I honestly believe, when we went back and we were looking at all the names that were brought to the SEC for the transfer portal, I continuously, and even though I apparently am the first self-deprecating Mississippi State hater, the one thing I said was the best quarterback wider, uh, the best quarterback head coach combo this year of the newcomers will be Jeff Levy and Blake Chapin. It's an ideal fit. Everything that they like to do with this up-tempo, veer and shoot, not air raid, but a lot of vertical passing down the field, it fits into Chapin's MO. And you got to remember that part of the reason why he left Waco and Baylor was not because of talent. It was because of he needed a fresh start because it was consistently an injured plague year. It was consistently finding himself on the sidelines and he wasn't able to stay upright. And so for me, you go and you add yourself to a great offense. And you got to remember that this was also a quarterback that came on in against the number five team in the country and was a game away from going to the college football playoff. Mike Gundy still is probably hating Dave Aranda for this moment because Blake Shapin set a big 12 record for the most consistent completions in a row going into the second quarter of that game, 21 of 21 to start off. So you know that these are two guys that – with the style of offense that you want to play and the style of offense that you try to coach, they can see, much like power line, eye to eye. I'm very excited to see what this offense can be because of I do think that if they are on the same mindset, they are going to be able to, I think, open up the playbook a little bit more going into week two, going into week three, when they have to face off against teams like Toledo and Arizona State before they face off against Florida. And I think that that's the main thing. It's just they're on the same page. If that's the case, I don't care if you win by 15 points and your defense is the reason why they're staying around with the Colonels. If the offense is scoring 490, if the offense put up 490 yards, you're seeing eye to eye. I, I do think, Cole, to your point, it's really important for Mississippi State. I, I know it's game one. I, I get that. But it is really important, I think, for this offense to be humming early. I, I just – because that's – if you're going to overachieve, you're going to prove the doubters wrong. People like myself, like Cole Thompson, like Dave Schumann, heck, prove SEC unfiltered wrong. Uh, <laughs> the offense is probably going to have to be the reason why. Uh, defensively in this game, Cole, I just I want to see what you got. I, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know what you have. I don't know if there's reason to have a bunch of optimism on the defense. Brand new defensive coordinator Coleman Hutzler. This is new for him. Also, everything is new in Starkville. It seems so. What do you have on the defensive side? I mean, listen, if you're going out there, here's the weird thing, Cole, in a game like this. If you shut down Eastern Kentucky, I don't think we can sit there and definitively say, man, the defense is going to be one of the best in the SEC. 
But if you're getting gutted by Eastern Kentucky, that's going to be a problem. It, it, it just is. So is there any reason to have optimism after game one for the defense? Who steps up and emerges? Again, it's all so brand new. You lost so many guys from last year, including Jet Johnson and Nathaniel Watson, who were fantastic in the middle for you. Who are those new guys that emerge as playmakers? And offensively, Cole, I, I just – you mentioned Blake Shape. I want to see that Blake Shape and Kelly Akari connection. I, I think that's one that's really, really underrated. It's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. There's so many other good ones, obviously. But Akari, the UTEP transfer, he's been fantastic throughout his career. We saw Mississippi State throwing it around in the spring game. was high scoring again. I think it is so critical for this offense to be clicking out of the gate. Not saying you got to go score 50 week one, but – to your point, it, the competition is going to stiffen up very quickly, like immediately. So you need to be able to flex your muscles a little bit, be humming like a well-oiled machine, and, and get get a big win. I think the secondary is going to be a really big make or break, and they added in two young emerging talents, both coming from prominent schools that know how to play, especially in coverage. Travion Wright comes on over from Memphis, a former three-star cornerback, barely saw the field last year. But again, this is a dude that you believe has all the upside and the gusto to be able to hold his own. And then you also bring in Montre Miller. That's the guy. Uh, uh, that's the guy that comes on over from West Virginia. Really big, all Big Twelve defensive back, five foot eleven, plays more so like he's six foot two. He's physical. Those Neil Brown defenses at Troy and in Morgantown, we both know that they are at the point of attack. They like to pressure you. They like to force you into being frustrated. And so if you get that standard really set in the secondary with two veteran safeties, I think that it does benefit you a lot. And go to your point when it comes to Blake Shapin real fast, especially when it comes to Kelly. The thing that I think really separates bad programs or programs that are having to completely hit the reset button is getting that veteran quarterback, getting somebody who has been in the system for multiple years, understands the ins and outs, the intricates of playing, that elevates your status a lot more. When I look at Mississippi State, the big blessing for them is, yes, it is a brand new era when it comes to wide receivers coming on in. You lose Xavier Thomas, which I thought was a huge loss that people are not talking about in the major spectacle of things, especially when you have the arm strength of shape and, and the speed of him. That would have been honestly, cinema, and it would have probably been a masterclass of how to not cover smaller but shiftier wide receivers. But still, you got a veteran quarterback. And so I think if he can set this tone, you're in a really, really good spot. But the same thing goes to the defense. They add in several defensive players, uh, only two returning starters. So how do you all mesh together? You know, a thing that does fly under the radar a lot in early games is what version are we seeing of a team? Are we seeing two rosters, one of the veterans, one of the newcomers trying to intermingle together? Or is it one cohesive unit underneath a new defensive coordinator that truly does set the standard of starting off football? So, Cole, as we move into our predictions for this ball game, I'll let you start since you're such a big fan of Jeff right. Levy at Mississippi State. Uh, thoughts on this season opener? Again, I, I think you and I are probably going to be in agreement. State's going to get the win in this when it all comes down to Mississippi State, they take care of their business, even with maybe some of the holes we feel like that are on the roster. It's still top to bottom, a much more talented roster. Again, but we've seen Eastern Kentucky cause some headaches. I mean, that Kentucky team last year wasn't bad, and they took them to a fourth-quarter game. So do you see a similar result this go-around? And I hope you don't say yes, because Mississippi State fans already have you on a list. I don't yeah. want to see that continue. Anyways, I want I want to move up to pu listen, <laughs> if, if, listen. If Brandon Walker is public friend number one, I want to move up to public enemy number one, so we can go to battle. And see how this actual war ends? Because I want him to admit I'm the king of college football, and you are the little pauper that doesn't have any say. Whatever. When it comes to that, um, if the Colonels had the same roster as last year, maybe I'd make that prediction. Maybe I would. But when you replace your starting quarterback when you replace your top three receivers, when you replace two offensive linemen, when you replace multiple starters on defense, it's hard. And I get it that you're going to say, well, look at all the pieces that Mississippi State's replacing. It still is the SEC, and it still is a high-tempo scoring offense. The thing that I'm really interested in, and a lot of people seem to forget this all the time, that it is a veer run offense. I think that somebody compared it to the veer and shoot, which is a lot like the gun and shoot, where they are not afraid to run the football. How does Devon Booth, the Utah State transfer at running back, factor into this pass? Uh, factor into this ground game? Because if last year he averaged 6.7 yards for the Aggies, I think he was a really good, interesting find. And the thing that we got to talk about now, which I'm not trying to bring other programs in, but the SEC 
the running back room and in, in general, there's a lot of questions because you don't have Ruben Owens anymore. You don't have CJ Baxter anymore. Quinshawn Junkins has left his way up to Columbus, Ohio. So really anybody could separate themselves as the front runner, as the new king of college football on the ground in the SEC. Could Devon Booth be that guy? Ultimately, I think this is going to be a really good litmus test for what we know about Mississippi State offense. I think that there's going to come with question marks defensively. And maybe that's going to be the case because of you just have to see them all mesh together. But I do think that Mississippi State will pull away into the third quarter. I think that you will be able to see even some backups play on the final two drives. I'm going to say Mississippi State wins this game 41-17. to So you and I, Cole, are really similar then. Uh, I, I would agree with you like I mentioned. It is, it is critical that the offense get off to a quick start game one of Jeff Levy because, again, I think the offense – is what you're going to be leaning on. I want to see Blake shape and be efficient, be accurate. I want to see this new offense. Like you mentioned, the running back room as well. I want to see Kelly Akari at the watch. I want to see the tight ends be used. My goodness, tight ends being used at Starkville. Who'd have thought a couple of years ago we're talking about the tight end position. Uh, and then defensively, like I mentioned earlier, Cole, I just want to see what you got. I, I think Mississippi State wins this as well. Um, I think it's a little bit closer than the home faithful would prefer. I've got Mississippi State 38 to 17, beating Eastern Kentucky. So you and I were really similar. But, you know, when you're favored by 29 and a half points, over under 58 and a half, I, it's probably a no play for me. It's probably a stay away because you just, you hate to take the underdog in the games like this because it, it, it's just, but 29 and a half feels like a lot. It feels like a lot in Jeff Levy's first game. And 58 and a half feels like a lot too. Now, granted, I have to be trusting Mississippi State's defense to, um, you know, to, to get stops and, and and play up to their abilities. So, again, from the gambling perspective, it's probably a stay-away game, gun to head. I'm probably taking the under and taking Eastern Kentucky. But I, I do think Mississippi State will get the win. I, I think, like you mentioned, they'll pull away late third quarter, early fourth quarter. may not be the 40-point the blowout the home faithful want, but I do think Mississippi State gets off to a hot start, wins this game 38-17. to 17. And, and Yeah, you have a yeah. ton of you have a ton of puzzle pieces. You have no idea if they're all going to fit in the right holes at this point. So there's just so much. There's just so much unknown. Yeah, to your point, it's it's all brand new. And for Eastern Kentucky, it's the same. But it's I, I think a lot of this game is just going to be getting the feet wet, feeling yourself out, figuring there'll be big plays. I have no doubt there'll be big plays, big offensive plays. Um, but to your point, you're also kind of just going into week one saying, what do we have? Just, just, just be thankful you got to win. Like, like we're, we're both saying you get to win. Neither one of us think that you're going anywhere past five and seven at best. So, like, this is one of the of the five that we have scheduled for you, or maybe three if you're me. Yeah, and maybe just maybe listen, Mississippi State wins this by even more than we expect, and all of a sudden there's more optimism on the offensive side, or more optimism in general moving into the harder part of the schedule. We shall see. So again, Cole Thompson and I both got Mississippi State getting the big W. Guys, how do you think Mississippi State, Eastern Kentucky will play out? How will the dogs fare in game one of the Jeff Levy era in Starkville? Guys, it's going to do all for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us all across social media as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. Stay tuned as we break down every single game, not just week one, but the entire 2024 SEC football season. And for Cole Thompson, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. We will catch you on the other side.